So before we begin, I want to do a blind uh, sound test. So the purpose of that is not to say, you know, pick one out of the other. It's to show that, that uh, they both tread in the same territory. So when this light was on, we were hearing a fuzz that was built from components in Zoya. When it was off, we were hearing the effect module uh, fuzz. And they certainly sound different, um, but I think both of them have uh, a, a good sound, an interesting sound. Um, so the way that, that the fuzz you heard that was built from Zoya components works is that it's a bit crusher uh, going into a low pass filter. And I'm going to spend just a, a second to talk about what bit crushing does. Um, so when audio enters a, a digital pedal like Zoya, it has to be converted into digital signals. So we have, you know, an audio signal. And if you zoom in on any section of that, it's actually a bunch of changes in amplitude that are stepped like bits. Now the resolution is really, really high, so you don't hear that. Um, what you hear is a smooth curve like you would in a natural audio source. Um, but with bit crushing, what we do is we take that smooth curve and we make it not so smooth. So these changes in amplitude that exist in a, a natural curve get flattened out and reduced into to bits um, which produce which produces distortion uh, and clipping so you know if you're looking at this and thinking about what hard clipping looks like where you've got a wave that you lop off the top of uh, then you probably notice some of the similarities between bit crushing and a fuzz. Um, and so as you reduce the, the bit count, the resolution gets smaller. And so the, the differences between uh, highs and lows get reduced and you get clipping from that. So we can create fuzzes using uh, components that we have available in Zoya. So in this case, I have uh, a bit crusher at reducing the, the amplitude to four bits, which uh, reduces the dynamic range, but it also, in doing so, creates uh, a, a harsher sound, uh, a, a distorted sound. And then I have that going into a, a state variable filter in the low pass mode uh, just to clean up some of the noise that a bit crusher will produce. Um, and the, the sum total is not that different from a, a fuzz. Uh, the reason why you really might want to do this is that if we compare how much they're worth in terms of CPU, a fuzz will come in at about 15% uh, 
of your CPU budget for a mono fuzz, um, you could produce a stereo fuzz uh, from these components for about that amount, if not maybe a little bit less. Um, now one thing you may notice is that the noise floor, I'm going to turn this up again, is a lot higher with the bit crusher fuzz. Um, so you might want to add a gate at the end of that uh, in order to uh, keep the, the noise to a minimum. But if you want to build a, a fuzz from these components, the, the important things to keep in mind are the bit depth. Um, so anything below about four bits uh, takes on some not quite distorted qualities. Um, five bits produces pretty fuzzy results, but, but as you push this further and further and further, you're reducing the, the uh, resolution of the wave. And so you get more and more uh, clipped results. When it's down to one bit, you essentially have square waves. Um, for your volume response, things are either high or they're low. Uh, and so dynamic response goes down to zero, which may be something you're after. It creates a, a very compressed uh, fuzz sound so that there's no dynamic range whatsoever. And I think it sounds pretty cool. But at about four bits, you still get some dynamic range. Um, and then this connection, if we look at it, is attenuated because in this process, we create gain. Um, and so we want to make sure that we attenuate that. If we wanted to create a control for that, we could put a VCA between the bit crusher and the, the filter and it would still clock in at less than a, a fuzz would. We could put a, a gate at the end of it if we wanted to control the noise floor, which you might want to do with a fuzz anyhow, and it would come in at about the same cost as a uh, fuzz in Zoya. Um, and, you know, the, the advantages there are that you also get other ways to configure it. So I've used a state variable low pass filter, but I played around with a band pass filter. Um, you can also remove the filter entirely, uh, which creates a, a very raw sound. Um, but the idea here is to reduce the resolution and then use some ways to, to shape its output. Um, so if we just listen to this without the low pass filter. I'm going to delete this connection. I need to attenuate again. That's our fuzz. So you can create a pretty effective fuzz without the filter. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to use that CPU resource to, to put in a gate, you could put in a gate. At that point, you could create a gated fuzz by using the input uh, to control the, the gate's threshold. Uh, so the, the whole idea here is, is it may not be a better way to produce a fuzz. Um, again, there's some issues with dynamic reduction, although you have that with any fuzz, uh, and with the noise floor being lifted, which I think is much more problematic with a bit crusher fuzz. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, you can reduce CPU, you can tailor the, the fuzz sound to what you need. Um, 
and produce results that that work for the patch that you're working for uh so